How to create a database in Microsoft Access, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. To create a new database in Microsoft Access, start by opening Access up. Now, if you've previously opened databases on this machine before, you'll see them listed down here under Recent. You'll also notice some templates up here, and these are other databases built by other people. And this is fine if you want to work with someone else's databases. But if you want to build your own database, click on this blank database right here. You will be asked for a file name for your database. The default is database one, not very descriptive. So let's click in here and let's type in customers. This file is going to be saved in your documents folder, whatever your user documents folder is. If you want to change that, you can click this button here to browse and put it somewhere else. I'm going to click create and a blank new brand new database will be created for me. Now in a Microsoft database, all of the data is stored in one or more tables. You can kind of think of tables like Excel spreadsheets. Access starts you off with your first table called table one. We're going to rename it in just a second. But unlike a spreadsheet, you can't just type anything you want wherever. In Access, you want to define your fields or columns and give them good names. For example, right here where it says click to add, click on that. And it wants to know what type of data you want to store in this particular field. Short text, number, currency, date and time, lots of different options. For now, just pick short text. And now it says field one, give it a name. I'm gonna type in first name, no spaces. Take it from me, this is just one of my tips as having done this for almost 30 years now, don't put spaces in your field names. All right, so this first field is going to be first name, capital F, capital N, first name. Then press enter or tab. That'll move you to the next column. Again, pick short text and type in last name. No space, capital L, capital N. Press enter. And that's good for now. We've got two fields. Actually, we have three fields. Access started us off with an ID field. What's an ID field? Well, basically, that's a way of giving each record, each row, a unique identifier, like a customer ID, a product ID, and so on. And Access will keep track of that for you using something called an auto number. For now, though, let's just click down here and we're going to enter in some data into our table. I'll type in my name, Rick, tab, Rost. And at this point, it's just like Excel, tab, Right, notice the ID one went in right next to my name. If I tab again, I could put in Jim Kirk, he's customer two, and so on, right? John Luke Picard, and I can keep typing in customers. If you want to add more fields, you can come over here, pick the data type, and type in a name. If you want to add more records, you come right down here and type in more people. Again, just like a spreadsheet with columns that are called fields and rows that are called records. Now, I'm done with this customer table, so I'm going to close it. And Access says, hey, do you want to save changes to the design of table one? We made some changes, right? We added first name and last name. So I'm going to say yes, and let's give this table a good name. Table one doesn't really tell me what's in that table. So I'm going to type in customer T. Now, again, this is my personal naming convention. I've been using this for many years. I like to end all of my tables with the letter T all of my queries with Q, my forms with F, my reports with R, and so on. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. A lot of people just call it customers, okay? Don't put spaces in here also, all right? Again, very important. Sometimes in books, you'll see TBL customer. That's fine too. Lots of different naming conventions. Just pick one and try to stay consistent. I like customer T. Now I'll hit okay. My customer table is saved right there. If I want to open up that customer table again and see the people in it, I can double click on it and that opens up the table. I can close it here. If you want to create another table, just go to create and then table design. And I've got a whole separate lesson on how to create tables. At this point, I'm going to close my database. And now the next time I open up Microsoft Access, you should see it right here on the recent list. If not, you can browse to it by clicking on open over here. And then again, here's the recent list or click on browse and browse to wherever you put your database file. 
open it up and there you go now the security warning is going to appear the first time you open any database this is just Microsoft's way of keeping your computer safe from viruses. All you have to do since you created this database is click on enable content. Don't do this for databases that you got from anybody else, including downloading off the web, unless they're mine, of course. I'll click on enable content and that will go away. And you shouldn't see that any other time you open this database in the future. And that's it. Now you know how to create a basic database in Microsoft Access. Now, of course, we just scratched the surface with Microsoft Access. If you want to learn more about building Microsoft Access databases, tables, queries, forms, reports, that kind of stuff, I have a free Microsoft Access Beginner Level 1 course. It's over four hours long, and it covers everything you need to know to get up and running with a complete Microsoft Access database. You'll find the link down below in the description. If you don't have time to sit through my four hour course, I do have a condensed version on how to use Microsoft Access that covers all the basics in about 30 minutes. I'll put a link to that down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. 
Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.